Space Elevator. Can this work? We have been striving to explore and ultimately colonize near space for a long time. New missions of research satellites no longer surprise anyone. We have also become accustomed to reports of commercial flights to low Earth orbit. However, the idea of a space elevator is still surprising and seems to be the domain of science fiction. Space missions carried out using one or another rocket are an everyday occurrence. And although they may be the best way to send people into orbit, other, not necessarily rocket-based, methods were also proposed long ago, including the famous space elevator. This concept is attributed to a Russian inventor of Polish origin, Konstantin Cholkovsky, and dates back to the late 19th century. It was Cholkovsky who developed the theory of motion of multi-stage rockets and derived a formula describing the dependence of the rocket's speed on its mass and the velocity of the exhaust gases. He believed that space colonization would lead our species to perfection and overall greatness. His orbital elevator would also be involved. Such a structure would extend from the Earth itself through individual layers of the atmosphere and then end at a given point in the geostationary orbit. Up to this point, everything sounds convincing. There is actually such a thing as a geostationary orbit. What's more, almost all of us use it in some way. For example, watching satellite TV or checking some maps and weather forecasts. Nowadays, we obtain a lot of weather data, also for Europe, from satellites permanently suspended above the Earth's equator. For Poland currently from the so-called Meteosat series. Third generation, MTG. Geostationary orbit is simply the height above the Earth at which objects. Once placed, still attracted by Earth's gravity, revolve around the Earth in accordance with its rotation. Therefore, if we send a satellite there, Theoretically it will remain suspended over a given point on our planet. In the case of Earth, the geostationary orbit is located at an altitude of 35,786 km above the equator, which is quite far from its surface. The speed of the satellite placed in this orbit is about 3 km per second, and the time it takes to orbit the Earth is 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds, which is exactly the same length as a sidereal day. The satellite will hover over a given point on Earth, but only if it is sent exactly above the equator. In practice, its stability in this orbit may also require position corrections from time to time. Theoretically, it is also possible to place a satellite with a cable reaching to the Earth even further outside the geostationary orbit, so that the center of gravity of the entire structure is permanently anchored directly in this orbit. Such a space elevator would work by stabilizing the cable by combining two forces, the Earth's gravitational pull, which exerts a downward force, and the centrifugal force of the entire structure's rotation, which would exert an upward force on the cable. The interaction of both forces would then create the tension necessary to hold the cable at the appropriate length. Elevators running along the cable could easily and cheaply carry cargo and passengers into space. 
There could also be a space hotel at the end of the entire building, probably generating considerable income. The whole concept is intended to allow for cheaper travel to orbit. It was indicated as a way to overcome the astronomical nomenomen costs associated with sending cargo and people into space using rockets in a space elevator apart from an attractive vision it is mainly about minimizing costs moreover our current missile systems are still largely disposable and the price of sending just a kilogram of cargo into orbit today is over 10,000 polish swatties USD. In the long run, the point of building an elevator lies in its potential to make space travel more economical. In theory, the cost of placing a payload outside geostationary orbit can be reduced to just a few hundred dollars per kilogram. Ecological considerations are also important. Unfortunately, there is currently no proof of concept for a space elevator. Although several attempts have been made to create its architectural design, numerous technical limitations mean that the idea has remained a dream for decades. The key element of the space elevator is its cable. Attached at the bottom, somewhere on the equator, and synchronized with the Earth's rotation via a satellite. Let's assume for simplicity that the equatorial location will not be problematic at all. However, there is still the issue of cable safety, including its durability and strength, because it must be made of materials capable of withstanding significant stresses. According to Alberto de la Torre of Northeastern University, a cable this long above Earth is not possible using standard materials. If we make it of steel, the maximum stress it will be exposed to in geostationary orbit will exceed its tensile strength, even several dozen times. However, there are modern substances that are more promising in this respect. Boron nitride nanotubes, diamond nanothreads and graphene. All these materials with low density and high tensile strength may make it possible to create a safe space elevator in the future, which is difficult to estimate. Moreover, this type of inventions are still being developed. Materials science, including nanotechnology, is evolving rapidly, so new opportunities abound. The concept of space elevators should not be ruled out in the not-too-distant future, admits the scientist. Although the initial investment, not only in money, but also in time and conceptual work, in a space elevator can be significant, the total costs can be recouped after the successful launch of just a few tons of cargo. Like humanity's multi-year effort to finally develop and launch the James Webb Space Telescope. This does not change the fact that until breakthrough discoveries in the field of materials science appear, such elevators to heaven will remain in the sphere of science fiction or rather abstract architecture is it worth working on them intensively de la torre emphasizes that they give hope for truly moving humanity towards a modern space civilization if they let their imagination run wild they can serve not only as a more cost-effective way of putting heavy loads into orbit for future space stations, but also in space mining or creating entire extraterrestrial colonies. A few years ago, 
The Japanese construction company Abayashi Corporation announced that it would put its own space elevator based on carbon nanotubes into operation in 2050. Previously, the year 2025 was mentioned, but considering that it is 2024, this plan is not very realistic. At a launch speed of 150 km per hour, the elevator, climbing, module, so-called climber, would reach the height of 400 km, at which the International Space Station is located, in about 2.5 hours. That's almost the same as traveling by bullet train between Tokyo and Osaka. Each start of an elevator carrying many kilograms of cargo would cost only a few thousand dollars. A space elevator is not only a means of space tourism and transport. The essence of this project is also to be an attempt to solve energy problems. As part of it, at an altitude of 36,000 km above the Earth, special solar satellites of the Space Solar Power System are to be deployed. Solar energy is basically unlimited and free there. And in such a high orbit, unlike on the Earth's surface, its acquisition is not influenced by the weather. A temperature-sensitive prosthetic limb helps users feel touch. Mini Touch is a device that allows a person using a prosthetic limb to feel temperature. The device can be easily integrated with existing prostheses and does not require additional operations. Thanks to it, amputees can not only detect changes in the temperature of objects, but also better feel body contact with other people. New research by scientists from the Santana School of Advanced Studies in Italy and the Federal Polytechnic University of Lausanne in Switzerland has, for the first time, enabled an amputee to feel temperature using a prosthetic hand. According to scientists, this is one of the last obstacles to providing prostheses with the full spectrum of senses available in the human limb. The results and description of the research were published in the magazine, Med. Temperature is one of the last frontiers in restoring sensation to robotic hands. For the first time, we are really close to restoring the full range of sensations to people after amputation, says Professor Silvestro Micera, co-author of the study. The mini-touch device allows for truly realistic real-time thermal feedback. The authors of the solution implemented it in the prosthesis of 57-year-old Fabrizio whose right arm was amputated below the elbow at the age of 20. For over a year, he participated in laboratory experiments that ultimately demonstrated the ability of his modified prosthesis to detect temperature. The device was integrated into the patient's personal prosthesis and attached to the same stump creating a thermal sensation on the patient's phantom index finger. The experiments were different. For example, in one, Fabrizio visually distinguished identical water bottles whose temperatures ranged from 40 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. He correctly distinguished the temperature every time he used the mini touch. When he wasn't using the device, he only hit about 33% of the shots. K. 
cases. In other experiments, he was able to sort metal cubes of different temperatures much faster with the device than without it. In another, blindfolded, he tried to tell the difference between a human arm and a prosthetic arm by simply touching them. With the device turned on, he was able to do it 80% of the time. Cases. Without the device only in 60%, when one of the researchers placed the sensor on his body, I felt the warmth of another person with my phantom hand. It was a very strong emotion for me. It was like reactivating a connection with another person, admitted Fabrizio. Sensory feedback is one of the most important steps in enabling amputees to interact with their environment. Based on previous findings of phantom thermal sensations obtained by stimulating specific points on the stump of the arm to induce perception, researchers developed the mini-touch device that allows amputees to perceive temperature. Mini Touch consists of a temperature sensor placed on the tip of the prosthetic index finger. Thermal information is sent from the fingertip of the prosthetic hand to the nerves in the stump of the amputee's arm, and the brain interprets it as, felt, in the missing hand. The device uses ready-made, easily available electronics, can be integrated with prosthetic limbs currently available on the market, and does not require surgery. Enhancing the sensory feedback of the prosthetic limb can help people feel that the artificial limb is part of their body. So far, thermal sensations have been largely neglected in neuroprosthesis research even though there is increasing evidence of their importance in our everyday lives. We believe that amputees could benefit from regaining temperature sensation well beyond the detection of cold or warm objects, says Jonathan Maheim from the Federal Polytechnic University of Lausanne. Co-author of the paper, Fabrizio wasn't the only one testing mini-touch. He and other amputees participating in initial studies reported that the most important advantage of the system was the ability to re-establish body contact with another person. The technology is currently being tested in the laboratory. The next step will be to prepare the device for home use and integrate thermal information from multiple points on the amputee's phantom limb. For example, enabling people to distinguish between thermal and tactile sensations on the finger and thumb may help them grip a hot drink, while enabling sensation in the back of the hand may improve the sense of connection between people by enabling amputees to feel when another person touches their hand. Our goal now is to develop a multimodal system that integrates touch, perception and temperature sensations. With this type of system, people will be able to say, this is soft and hot, or this is hard and cold, explains Dr. Solomon Shakur from the Federal Polytechnic University of Lausanne. This study paves the way for more natural hand prostheses that restore the full range of sensations, offering amputees a richer and more natural perception of the tactile world, Mycera concludes.